The weather lately has been a bit nuts. Given the floods, lightning storms, downed trees, and other crazy weather going on, you might be thinking about a backup generator for your home. You might even be thinking about a battery bank, like a power wall. But as it happens, the best choice for most people is a good old-fashioned generator, but with a new high-tech twist. Hi, and welcome back to scottystick.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus and my Space Kitty shirt. So if you're thinking battery bank, you probably already live in a green house. You know, it's got energy efficient everything. It's super insulated. Uh, you've got solar panels with a battery ready inverter. You've got your EV. You may even have green blood. Well, good for you. In that case, this is not the video you're looking for. This video is for normal people in normal houses with normal electrical needs. But hang on, maybe a battery bank is actually a good idea. Well, no, not yet anyway. There's some new battery tech in the pipeline. Uh, that's going to change the game rather considerably in my opinion. So you might want to wait a little while. But what about, say your average 10 kilowatt hour battery bank. Well, it's going to cost you two or three grand and it's going to provide 10 kilowatts for one hour or two kilowatts for five hours. On the other hand, you could just buy a four kilowatt gasoline generator, small little thing. Uh, you could pull two kilowatts from it and uh, it's going to last you maybe a good 24 hours on three to four gallons of gasoline. Oh, and instead of two or three grand, it's going to cost you about 500 bucks plus the cost of the gasoline. So economically speaking, for most people, no, a battery bank really isn't a good idea. And of course, your little portable generator is portable, so you can do anything you want with it, which is pretty handy. Okay, so my recommendation is that you get a generator, but what kind of generator? Because there are three different main types. First, you have the big guns. These are usually diesel or natural gas powered. Typically in the tens of kilowatts, you can power your entire house. They're reliable and you can plug in and run anything because it's kind of like your own lake of electricity. The power grid is sort of like an ocean of electricity. One of these big generators is like a lake of electricity. There's plenty of juice where you can do whatever you want with it and you're not going to have any problems. The issue is that they're very big and very, very expensive. Then we have the little guy. They're usually gasoline powered, a few kilowatts. Uh, you can power only a few of your key gizmos. They're noisy. They are portable, but they're cheap. And they're kind of like only a bucket of water as opposed to a lake. In other words, not good for powering absolutely everything. And then there's what I call the new little guy. It's like the normal generator little guy, but it uses an inverter and has none of little guy's drawbacks. This is by far the best option. So the new little guy is what is called an inverter generator, and these things are very cool. A normal generator is simply an engine that turns an alternator. The alternator is kind of like the one in your car. It adjusts its output depending on the electrical load it needs to drive. And normal jennies work, but they often have a distorted AC sine wave output. So if you have one of these standard small generators, okay, you can power your chest freezer, maybe your refrigerator, uh, but you can forget about anything else you've got in your house. Actually, you can possibly even forget about your fridge, because if your fridge is an inverter type, where instead of an AC induction motor driving the compressor, it's actually got electronics in it, and it's a DC driven, electronically driven motor, forget about it, your standard small generator is not going to be very happy with that. And of course, literally everything in your house these days has added electronics. Everything has inverters in it. It's all DC motors because it's efficient and it's more powerful and blah, blah, blah. But all those electronics create a problem when you want to use a standard small generator. Which reminds me, if you find this video or any of my others helpful, please consider subscribing to me on Substack, either free or paid, or you can go to my website, scottystech.info, and click either PayPal or Stripe, 
and send me a little donation. Yeah, with AI and ads these days, clicks to websites, right, it's all kind of a disaster. So uh, if you can help me out, I would really appreciate it. So these small inverted generators are a new breed of generator that actually converts DC into AC using electronics. Wait, what? I just said that all the electronics in your house are causing the problem. Yeah, just bear with me a minute. Inverter generators work like this. First, the engine turns the alternator. The alternator, instead of spitting out a pure, nice, clean sine wave, they spit out an AC waveform that's not a clean sine wave, but instead something that's optimized for being converted into DC, direct current. That optimized AC is then rectified into DC. The DC then powers an inverter, and the inverter converts the DC back to smooth AC, no matter what you plug into it. The main benefits are that inverter jennies have electronics that compensate for, well, all your other gizmos with all their electronics. The whole system also works together so the engine of the generator doesn't need to run at a constant speed, meaning it generates less noise and consumes less fuel in many cases. What's more, many units run on two different fuels, gasoline or propane, which is pretty handy. And inverter jennies even like things like UPSs, unlike small standard generators. You may recall in my previous video I was talking about how you need a UPS, a battery backup for your computer. Well, if you have one of these compact standard generators, good luck getting your UPS to be happy with it. If you've got a big generator, no problem. It'll work just fine. But if you have a small generator, you definitely want the inverter generator or you're going to have all kinds of trouble. So sure, if you can afford it, get one of the big guys, the massive generators, power your whole house. You can even get and install an automated transfer switch that automatically switches you on and off Jenny power when your grid power goes down. Right. It's really expensive. For most of us, a simple, small, compact inverter generator is going to be the go-to solution. You can get one up to 5 kilowatts. They usually range in price somewhere between $400 and $1,000. Um, the dual fuel ones are especially handy. Just remember that if you get a gasoline-powered one, uh, gasoline has a limited shelf life. Usually it's about six months. If you add a fuel stabilizer, you can stretch that to about a year. So if you go with gas-powered and you have a bunch of gasoline stored, make sure you rotate it, like, say, every few months, dump it into your car and refill it at the, the gas station. Uh, or you can go with propane. Uh, with propane, you'll get slightly less power output from the generator. But the handy thing about propane is that you can get several propane gas cylinders and they last like forever. No problems with storage. So, right. And it's also handy having the flex fuel, the dual fuel option where you can use one or the other. That's pretty cool. And since the generator is compact and portable, you can power whatever you want, whenever you want, wherever you want. You can even take it over to your buddy's house and power his stuff. Like... You can take it camping with you, whatever. So yeah, up until now, these small generators that were actually affordable, they weren't very good, except for maybe running one or two appliances. And beyond that, the noisy AC would cause problems, the breaker would trip, all kinds of nonsense. Now with these inverter generators, it kind of brings backup power to the masses because with an inverter generator, that inverter is compensating for whatever you plug into it and they're more energy efficient to boot, so what's not to love? But I'm curious, do you already have your own backup power scheme? Let me know in the comments below. For more techie tips, see either scottystech.info or my new Substack. Thanks for watching. See you next time.